For me, rail fanning used to be a lot like Christmas. You usually didn't know what you were going to get, but you were usually pleasantly surprised, and the anticipation leading up to it was nothing short of pure adrenaline. But even for someone who spends as much time by the tracks as myself, there are days that stand out from the norm and go down on one's own personal rail fanning history. June 14, 2015 was one such day for me. For once, the day actually started out right when instead of narrowly missing my first train of the day, this time I narrowly caught it. I'd made it trackside just after 0500 when I heard something coming up the hill, so with literally less than 60 seconds to spare, I mounted the camera as the lead loco's headlight pierced the morning darkness and lit up the rails with two GEs and 72 cars. So far, so good. Now you're probably thinking that this is the train 37T, but let me remind you that we've traveled back to June of 2015, and this train is the Canadian Pacific Train 459, one of only two that I would ever catch. The 459 was an Enola, Pennsylvania to Binghamton, New York manifest, and the sister train to the 458 Binghamton to Enola Freight. In the final days of the Canadian Pacific in the region, rail service on the Big Red had shrunk into a pathetic few trains a week. The 458 and 459 combos ran with NS Power and CP Cruise, and both trains, along with the 258 and 259 brother-sister combo, could work the Taylor Yard en route to their destinations. It all depended on which train was running that day. Like I said, a few trains per week or roughly one or two per day. The 459 was an evening train that was hard to catch in the summer and impossible to catch in daylight when the winter days were short. It was only because it was running extremely late from yesterday that I was able to catch it today. The double stacks up front are an easy identifier that this train has just picked up in Taylor Yard which is why I was lucky enough to see it. The one advantage that you had when hunting the 459 was that 19th century idiom that whatever goes up must come back down. This expression was literal as the locomotive power that went up on the 459 from Enola would typically come back down to Enola on the next train 458. So if you missed something good going north, which was likely, you had a chance to catch it when it came back south. When it comes to rail fanning, Taylor Yard holds a special place for me because it reminds me a lot of rail fanning down in Dixie. Now if you're familiar with railroading in the south, then you'll know exactly what I mean. Taylor Yard was a rail fan hotspot of mine in 2015 because most of the traffic on the line came through in the mornings and that meant a lot of train meets at either end of the yard. Another rarity which still holds true today is the empty salt spur. Seeing the salt spur with not a single car on it has never been common and would make today's train watching even more epic as the empty track will give us an unobstructed view of the extreme north end of the yard. Um, I've got everything in, I've got almost 
that whole subdivision in Coldfield right now. Give me one second. Okay, that, that, yeah, and that's 679, I'm sorry, 672 to 673, over. No, I, I know what you meant. But, like I said, I don't even know if the system will let me. Give me a second. Yeah, no problem, I'll stand by over. Fast forward nine years to today. It's the last day of June, 30, 2024, and the morning started out with gloomy overcast. Moving northbound, breaking the summer morning serenity is Roanoke, Virginia to Binghamton, New York, train 10Z. The details to pay attention to are the unit numbers of the two locomotives pulling this mile-long train.
We're back in 2015, and train 259 is waiting for the Enola, Pennsylvania-bound train 458 to come down the line. The lead unit on the 259 is an ex Line EMD SD60 built in 1989 as the Sioux Line number 6049. It was overhauled, repainted, and renumbered to the CP6249 that you see before you at Cadrail in Montreal, Quebec, Canada in December of 2012. It has the winterization hatch over the first radiator fan of the long hood like we talked about back in video T105. If you were following this channel, say, five or six years ago, then you already know that the EMD SD40-2 number 5690 and me go way back. It was built in 1975 and wore just about every paint scheme that CP had, including the infamous and ill-fated St. Lawrence and Hudson scheme of the 1990s. It was renumbered to STL and H number 5690 in January of 1997 and later repainted and renumbered to CP 5690 in December of 2006 and was also equipped with cab signals and notch pilots for use over New York City's Metro North Line. The 5690 was retired in June of 2013 and put back into service in May of 2014. Back in service on the soon-to-be NS Sunbury line on trains like the 258 and the 259. Both locomotives were a mainstay on the main line and on these Binghamton Allentown turns almost all the way up until the end on September 18, 2015. It was sold to K&K Recycling in Pickering, Ontario in August of 2016, less than one year after CP exited Pennsylvania. In a scene reminiscent of the Lackawanna Heritage Unit in the last video, after a multi-hour wait in the hot summer sun, train 458 rounded the bend and into Taylor behind the same two diesels that went up on its sister train 459 that we caught earlier this morning.
Back to the Future on June 30, 2024, just like the Canadian Pacific 259 of nine years earlier, today the Delaware Lackawanna train DL3 comes north up the Taylor Yard siding to wait its turn to move on to the main line. Also like nine years earlier, the DL3 is waiting for the sister train of the one that went up before it. Today, it's the Binghamton to Roanoke bound train 11Z. Genesee Valley Transportation is America's largest operator of six-axle Alco and Montreal Locomotive Works diesels. As of late, it's almost doubled its fleet of the rare CC locomotives with the acquisition of M636 units from the Regional Railroad, Western New York and Pennsylvania. Rebuilt General Electric AC60CWs idled the WNYP's active fleet of six MLW Big Sixes in road service in 2019 and they were sitting in storage for a time. The railroad then offered them for sale to the Genesee Valley, which relies on an all-ALCO MLW roster of about 40 units to power its five railroads in Pennsylvania and New York. GVT selected and purchased four 3,600-horsepower M636s, all of which were former Quebec Cartier units, two of which had been built for the Canadian National, the locomotives later worked for the New York, Susquehanna, and Western before moving to the WNYP through leasing companies. Business continues to grow on the Delaware Lackawanna in northeastern Pennsylvania, and the company relies on its four big six-axle engines, two MLW 630s and one MLW 636 and one Alco C636. These four locomotives are used to power heavy trains up the steep grades of the Pocono Main Line. The newly acquired units received DL reporting marks at Olean, New York, and went en route to Scranton, the current home of recently acquired Alco PA No. 190. Unfortunately for the rail fans, the railroad had said that they had no immediate plans to place the new additions into service, although a recent trip to the Von Storch diesel locomotive shop may prove something different. Although the M636s are operable, the fourth unit will be considered as a part source with all four serving in a vital standby role. The ninth, technically the fifth six-motor MLW, former Corbett Cartier M636 number 41, has been on the property since 2019. Purchased from a leasing company, the locomotive had been on the WNYP for several years, being used occasionally. It was initially bought as a part source for their own MLWs, but has remained intact to date. As for the four axles on the WNYP, for now they appear to be safe, continuing to serve in local and some mainline service over the railroad. WNYMP affiliates Bath and Hammondsport, Ontario Midland, and Livonia, Avon, and Lakeville also rely on all Elko MLW fleets. Outside of those units, Four remaining big MLWs were still on the WNYMP, one M636 plus two other long, out-of-service six-motors remained on the property. The oldest unit of the six-motor fleet, Western New York and Pennsylvania C630, number 630, built as Canadian Pacific number 4500, has since been donated to the French Creek Valley Railroad Historical Society of Meadville, Pennsylvania.
Unlike the agonizingly long wait for the 458 nine years earlier or the Lackawanna Heritage Unit of just a couple of weeks ago, it wasn't long before the black and white whiskers of the now leading AC44 C6M number 4107 rounds the curve into Taylor to greet the waiting DL3. And just in case you missed it, these are the same two locomotives that dragged 10Z north through town this morning on their way to Bingo Town from which they just came. Power up, power down. Nine years apart, almost to the day.
So here we are again, back in 2015, to watch as our dynamic duo of Canadian Redcoats ease off of the siding and onto the main line after waiting for more than two hours in the 90 plus degree heat. Back to the future in 2024, we now get to watch the same northbound movement as the Canadian Pacific Manifest 259 nine years earlier. By now, several thunderstorms have come in from the north and the south bringing in high winds, hiding the sunlight and making it a close call as to whether or not the DL3's marker would clear our cameras before the rain came down. Fortunately for us on this day, we just made it. 